All right. Hello, everybody. Dan Tomaszewski with Everything MSP here. Hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, very excited for January's first elevator pitch. And uh, uh, as people are rolling in here, I'll just uh, go over a little bit of the housekeeping here. Um, we've got a, a lot of great content. Uh, we've got uh, three great vendors here with us that are going to uh, go over their product and services so that we all have a good understanding. Um, this is a great time for us to be able to, you know, take uh, take a look at our overall stack, look at what we can add into our stack, or maybe there's something that we're wanting to change in our stack and uh, to make us more efficient, more productive, more profitable in our businesses. And uh, today we've got CyberGuard 360, we've got Data Networking, as well as QuoteWorks. And uh, so thank you to each of, uh, each of you guys for joining us today. Um, a few things that I'll cover is what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll begin um, with our presentations. Each one of our sponsors uh, will have 10 minutes to give us their elevator pitch. And then what we'll do is we're gonna roll into demo rooms right after that. Now, the, the beauty of the demo rooms is it's going to be some, um, some you know, more hands-on learning as well as any kind of additional questions and answers that you might have. That is the perfect time to ask any questions that you might have of these vendors to be able to learn more about them. Um, once we get through that, um, and actually just, just as we start the demo rooms, we're going to throw a poll out there just asking uh, which of the vendors that you'd like to hear from. So go ahead and complete that poll and we'll pass that information on so they can reach back out to you. Um, once the demo rooms are done, we will pull everybody back into the main room. Now, you might be asking, how do I get into the demo rooms? So you're, you'll have the ability to pick and choose which demo room that you want to join and you can bounce back and forth. So you, you jump over to QuoteWorks and you learned what you needed to and you want to jump over to CyberGuard 360 or Datto, uh, you have that ability to move around. In the lower part of your screen in the Zoom uh, menu, you'll see it will say breakout. And so that's where you'll be able to pick those at that time. Um, if for some reason you don't pick a particular room or you're not sure, um, if, you, if you aren't sure, just uh, go ahead and send us a message and we'll help you through it. Uh, even if you say, hey, I want to be joined in this particular room, we can, we can move you um, if you'd like. Um, if somebody doesn't pick a room, we'll go ahead and just randomly move you into a room just so that, uh, you know, you are in one of the demo rooms. Um, and then uh, once we pull everybody back into the main room, um, we'll just do some final wrap up. And at that point, what we'll do also is we will give away $250 cash to one lucky attendee. And of course, you have to stay all the way to the end in order to be eligible for the $250. And of course, why wouldn't you, right? <laughs> so, um, but $250 cash, uh, not a bad thing as the, the weekend is uh, coming up here. So um, with that being said, we're gonna kick things off. We're gonna go in alphabetical order. We're gonna st start with Al Alper with CyberGuard 360. And uh, Al, how are you doing today? I'm great, no complaints whatsoever. Awesome. It's a beautiful um, Thursday. It is, definitely. So you can go ahead and uh, share your screen if you have uh, if you have a slide deck that you want to share. Um, I'm going to have Al give his own introduction, um, a little bit of his background about his organization. But before we get started, we're going to put Al in the hot seat here. We're going to have him tell us uh, one thing about Al that most of us might not know. What is one interesting fact about Al? Oh man, um, are there any <laughs> children on this call? <laughs> Just me. Um, how about two things? Easy peasy. Um, I was a school teacher for eleven years. Oh yes, wow! Yes, this happened to your children. Um, <laughs> and I've been to all fifty states and the forty-eight contiguous states. I was in the saddle of my iron horse. Very cool. I'm a so, motorcycle like rider. So, um, <laughs> I, I have to ask, what did you teach? Um, yeah, so, <laughs> um, my final rotation, I taught math and computer. What else? <laughs> so, oh, very cool. But I had stints very in other, cool. uh, in other disciplines, junior high school too. So if you, if, like, it is an insane asylum, junior high, like you got, they, they come in with hormones raging and they go out like adults. It's like, it's, it's an insane asylum. So 
There you go. Well, awesome. Al, we're going to go ahead and um, turn the reins over to you. Go ahead and uh, do your introduction and begin your presentation. The clock for 10 minutes for you starts now. Oh, man. Okay, so may, you may have to bo peep me off the stage because I tend to ramble, as almost everybody on this call probably knows that about me. So, hello, everybody. Al Alper, uh, CyberGuard360. I am the CEO and janitor of the company. Um, this beautiful corner office that, that I have here in the cellar is just terrific. Anyhow, um, so we are CyberGuard360. We are a SaaS-based company. We offer cybersecurity and compliance solutions through our SaaS platform. Some of you may or may not know us, uh, but we've been, I've, been, I've been around for a long period of time, long before I was gray. Um, CyberGuard360, well, I'll get into that next slide. How's that? Um, all right, so I got to be on the right screen to change pages. Sorry about that. So it was started by myself, a 25-plus year MSP. It's been over 30 years now, good Lord. Um, and a 30-year developer. We were friends for a while, and, and actually it started in my MSP, but that's a a much longer story for my 10 minute window. I did tag it on at the end in case I didn't run out of time, which would be unusual for me. Um, so when we started the, the company, it, we had the, the, we were very intentional about what we were gonna do. We wanted to create a unified cybersecurity and compliance platform. I have some experience in the financial services space and very in, and intimate relationships with, with many regulators across multiple states and the federal government. And the I saw this compliance freight train headed towards the SMB market and a cyber compliance space. And this was really when cyber was starting to take off a little bit. It wasn't as ubiquitous as you started to see it in 2019 and 2020, but it was starting to take off and cyber compliance, which is what I saw coming down the tracks and it isn't here yet. So there's still tremendous opportunity, but it's coming down the tracks. And I thought it was a good idea that we get something off the ground to do that. And so the whole concept was to build a platform that would allow us to bring together cybersecurity solutions and compliance solutions into one platform because cyber compliance was as big as it was. And we did that with five mandates. And those five mandates really come from my own experience as an MSP. And, and you know, we arguably a successful MSP. And we got there because of, of the way we treated our clients, making their life easier, automating anything we could to minimize our HR footprint, focusing on our clients, et cetera. And so I brought those philosophies to CyberGuard 360. And when we, when we decided to do this, we said, okay, these are our five mandates. This has to be very easy for MSPs and their clients to use. We have to automate the hell out of everything that we possibly can, because the last thing an engineer or an end user wants to do is click 100 different places to get a report or click 50 places to get a whatever the case may be. So you want to be able to automate as much as you can. I wanted to focus on the end user because the, at the end of the day, the consumer of our solutions are the clients, not the MSPs. And while obviously we need the MSPs and want the MSPs for the business, if their clients aren't happy, they're not going to use you as a vendor. That's just a fact. And every vendor on this call will tell you that. Um, and so we said, let's focus on the end user. Let's eschew the, the engineer. Making them happy will get you in the front door. It won't make you sticky. And so we wanted to make sure we were focusing on the end user. We wanted to be very MSP friendly. So as an MSP, there's a lot of things that we hate about vendors. And, and while I still own the MSP, by the way, I don't run that, but I can tell you as an MSP, there's a lot of things we hate about vendors. And there are things that we love about vendors, things that we love to hate about vendors also. But all of that notwithstanding, I wanted to be very MSP friendly because I, was, I intended to be a consumer of our platform. And I wanted to make sure that it was also conducive for my own MSP. And I think that what made us so successful as an MSP was because we listened to our clients. And so listening to our customer and our customers, as I said before, are both our MSPs, but as their, their clients as well, because ultimately their clients are telling them what they like and don't like, and they're going to pass it up in a filtered manner. And I'll get into more about this in a little bit. And so that's what our, that's what our goal was we, and, our, and our mandate for that. 
Uh, we spent a couple of years building and we launched the platform in July of 2019, right before the infamous COVID. That was a lot of fun. Um, and CyberGuard 360 was effectively born. And if you, can, if you think about unifying cybersecurity solutions and compliance solutions, you can see all these moving parts of the, this is why it took so long to build, by the way. Um, you're over here, so I keep looking to my right to look at you guys. Um, so we have a lot of moving parts to our platform. I'll get into some of them, but not in depth. Certainly jump into the breakout room and, and Robert, who's on the call and, and actually gonna man the, the breakout room because he is much better at the platform than I ever could be. Um, we can get into more of these little pieces, but we've got a lot of moving parts to the platform and we designed it such that not only were we doing all these things, but they were talking to one another. Modules were talking to one another. So you can, you can evaluate the risk of an employee by looking at how they performed on the, on training on how they performed on attestations on how they performed with simulated phishing. Are there creds on, on the dark web that where in the past as an MSP, you'd have to buy multiple platforms and, download CSVs, drop it into Excel, perform spreadsheet, I almost said a bad word, spreadsheet exercises to get the data to talk to one another and try to figure it out. And by the time you've done that, another month has gone by and you have to do it all over again. And so uh, we also intentionally built it to be fully integrated with one another from the ground up. And in so doing, of course, that's gonna bring the, out the question, what, what about those five mandates? You're doing all of these things how is it possible that you're going to adhere to those five mandates, ease of use, automate wherever possible, focus on the end user, et cetera, et cetera. And so let's take a look at that. Ease of use. Under 10 minutes for an MSP to set up a client. And that 10 minutes includes the amount of time it takes to, to do the Azure AD integration. If you're not doing Azure AD integration, setup is under five minutes to set up a client with as many or, or all of the modules that you want to give that fully configurable by the MSP. Simple one, two, three phishing campaign set up. Less than five minutes to set up, to set it up for one client, some clients, all clients for a month, a six months, a year, doesn't matter. Three steps under five minutes, you can deploy to all of your clients a year's worth of phishing campaigns that go out on a monthly basis, quarterly basis. You determine the cadence. That takes less than five minutes to do. Uh, one click prospecting. You can run a dark web search, quite literally two fields to enter, click click a checkbox and you're off to the races. And you get dark web prospecting, same with our cats, same with our other prospecting tools that we have out there. And there's obviously many more moving parts of the platform and I can get into the ease of use of all those in the breakout room. Awesome. Uh, automation, let's talk about automation. So you set the training, so we use training as an example, set the training frequency and what users get it, enroll them. And from there on forward, they're enrolled in training. Every time new training comes out, they're automatically enrolled. They're automatically notified that new training has been out there. They're nudged every month. If they haven't completed the training, manager, managers get notified when their employees haven't completed training. So we fully automated the notification process that an MSP would typically have to go through, the platform does that for you. Weekly security shorts. So annual training is awesome. A lot of people offer annual training, but we also believe that, it's, you know, I was, a, I, I took high school calculus. Anybody on this, anybody listening to this call take it? I, I got an A in it, by the way. I couldn't tell you a damn thing now about calculus. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's a fact of life. And so we believe the same thing is true in sec with security awareness training. And so we have something we call weekly security shorts and they're micro trainings that get delivered automatically to the users that you've assigned them to their inbox. Every Thursday morning, they show up in their inbox. We track who opens them. We track who views them. We track to see how long they view them. We monitor all this because from a compliance standpoint, you have to be able to report this stuff out to auditors if you're if you have in fact obligated to audit. If not, you still it's still good information to have and make available to the CEOs of your clients. All the alerts, reports, reminders are, can also be delivered automatically to the reports with nothing for you to do, nothing for you to think about. It's a checkbox when you configure your client, and then these reports will be automatically delivered to them, such as monthly reports, notifications of dark web breaches, the fact that users haven't completed their training or fell for phishing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And integration with Azure AD and have users automatically, if you integrate with Azure AD, users will automatically be added or removed to all of those modules that you've assigned them 
based on the integration with Azure AD. And again, when you're setting up a client, if you're using Azure AD, less than 10 minutes to set up a client with Azure AD, without Azure AD, less than five minutes. And then a lot more automation that goes on on the platform. In other systems, by the way, these are much more manual. And so I know how long it takes as I use those systems. And I, and I still know what they look like today. Anyhow, um, end user focus. So we have over 800 pages of white label. Everything we do, this platform is white labeled end to end. So you get your own logo, your, your own branding on everything. Everything that goes out to your clients goes out in your name, not our name. They don't even know who we are. In fact, our URL, which is piisecure.net, is not CyberGuard 360. Nothing says CyberGuard 3. No one will have a clue who we are. To them, it's all you. And so oh, we have over 800 pages in white label reports. If there's no techno babble in this. It's written with the end user in mind, the CEO, frankly, of the client, because they're the ones who are looking for the business intelligence to manage their business. And we give it to them typically in a graphical form where applicable for in charts and, and pie charts and um, FICO score like numbers, et cetera. And they get all of that information automatically delivered to them if you if you uh, choose to, to do that. Um, training and weekly shorts are, are tr the annual training and the weekly security shorts speak to the end user, not at them. I've watched way too many trainings where people are getting yelled at by the by the person at the front of the room. As a former school teacher, I know what happens when you yell to students at the front of the room. And every user of awareness training is a student. And they will shut down if you're yelling at them. And sadly, a lot of the people who do awareness training yell at them. It's just, you know, it's not, it's not they're not doing it intentionally. It's just the nature of, of things, sadly. Um, and our knowledge base, which is a, they have a lot of how-to videos that allow you and your users to self-guide, to self-help, in a guided fashion. Awesome. MSP friendly. Can't be much more MSP friendly than no contracts, no minimums, no kidding. So one of the, as an MSP, one of the things I can't stand are contracts to this day. Most MSPs don't like, I don't know one that love, well, that's not true. Most MSPs love them when they're, it's a contract with their client. They don't like it when it's a contract with their vendor. And so we have no contracts, no minimums, no kidding. We are very MSP friendly in that regard. And then listening. This is one of the uh, testimonials from one of our partners. And we have hundreds and hundreds of testimonials just like this. We take every single partner request and ticket and, and comment, et cetera, very seriously. It, to us, it's how we shaped our platform. And so we quite literally have made thousands of enhancements and updates to the platform based on their feedback. Hundreds of features have been added as a result of that. Just our platform is what it is today. And we've, we we're one of the top vendors, frankly, in the space um, based on the number of partners because we take our relationship with our partners seriously and we listen to what they have to say. But we, it's not just what they have to say when they, when they call you to tell you you're doing a great job or you're doing a blank job. We, take, we, we listen to what they say by the way they and their clients use the platform. So our team generates reports on a daily basis as to user behavior on the platform. Where are they clicking? Where are they going? What are they doing? How long are they staying there? What reports did they open? We look at all of this and we evaluate where things matter and where things are falling away and we make adjustments to the platform accordingly. And I would argue that's one of the reasons why we have as many, many satisfied partners, as many testimonials as we have. And as Scott said, um, they appreciate the fact that we do that. And we don't do that and say anything to them. It just happens um, because we listen to them. And we've got, as I said, just un, a, a wealth of testimonials from our partners. I, I harass them at every show when I see one. As you can see, I got a lot of videos there. I grab them at a show. I make them give me a video testimonial. Um, I might pay one or two of them. I'm only kidding. Uh, so we get tons of testimonials from our partners because we really do. We, we just love them because they're our partners. We love them because I love the MSP space. And I, I know these people, they are, they are me, so to speak. Um, so what has that done for us today? We've got tens of thousands of users. This is how we've grown. Um, we have MSPs around the globe. We've won 30 plus industry. I'm not going to read this. The, um, you all can read, I hate reading slides, but apparently the, the channel likes us. MSPs appreciate what we do for them. They reward us with that, with their business. Most importantly, they reward us with the generosity of their, of their votes when we get awards. Uh, we look at the tools that they use. They said our top four tools, dark web security awareness training, simulated phishing and policy and procedure management. I guess the, the, um, that wasn't in the, in the top four 
a year and a half ago. It is now, I guess, compliance is starting to click. Um, how we stand up to some of our competitors, as you can see, we do a lot more than virtually everybody else that we compete against. And that's because, and I'm not saying what they're doing is bad. It's just, you know, they have a silo in which they are experts and we do a lot of things in which we're experts. We just do more in, in those silos. Oh, I'm going to go past this. I think, am I, ding, where, ding, where, ding, where? ding, 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 okay. I'm not, ding, ding, ding. Okay. So one last thing. One last thing. <laughs> okay. Quick uh, special <laughs> offer. Go into the breakout room for this, but if you want to be featured on a magazine, become a partner three months later, you'll get, you'll get to be a featured story in a magazine. We'll talk about it in the breakout room and I'm getting Bo peeped off the stage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Uh, one of the things that you said that totally uh, jumped out at me is if you don't use it, you lose it. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's one of those things that when we are trying to educate our our clients and users to uh, be safe and be vigilant, um, is they're using their machine out on the interwebs. Um, it, it does take constant reminders. Um, I think it's just how we are as humans, the way we're wired. We, we need to be continuously told because if we don't hear it anymore, then we assume that things are fine and it's no longer a, a, an important thing. So, um, so Al, thank you so much. Uh, and Can everybody I just, uh, interject really quick for that. Cause I think yeah, that's a, absolutely. You know, one of the things that MSP struggle with, and I would argue that anybody on this, on this call would agree, you know, getting, getting not, not only just they'll, they'll lose, use it or lose it, but getting people to use it to start with, most MSP struggle with mm, jump into yeah. the breakout room. I'm going to tell you how in my MSP, we have over 90% adoption of security awareness training. Awesome. And we've got hundreds of clients. So I can tell you, and I'll tell you how we do that. Very good. So be sure to jump into CyberGuard 360's demo room. Next up, we've got Ryan and Ryan. I, I want to um, pronounce your last name properly. Is it Grindrod or Grindrod or none of the above? The door, the second door on the left, it's Grinrod. There we go. There yes, we go. <laughs> How are you today? I am doing awesome. How about yourself? I've never been better, and I appreciate your checking on me. There we go. <laughs> so so now it's your turn to be in the hot seat to tell us one unique thing about Ryan that uh, most people might not be aware of. Yes, sir. It's weird. I um I woke up this morning and I thought, man, maybe Dan might ask me a little bit about uh you know some unusual facts about myself. So so I actually put them in my deck over here uh, because I like photos and I'm a visual type of guy. So that's what I I looked like when I started at Datto. When I started in IT though, uh, I was big in <laughs> obstacle racing, and here we have a perfor a during. I'm the guy that's hanging off the bridge. I did not make it to the top. I fell off. And then, and then an after. Um, so excited, terrified, and really proud. And then another fun fact, um, I'm sitting at what I consider the young age of 44, but I'm blessed to have this little uh, grandbaby mm. in my life. So that's my daughter and my grandson. In the middle that's is awesome. what it looks like when the grandson, the dog, and I uh, make crazy monster faces. And then five seconds later, he falls asleep. That's awesome. <laughs> Got to love the little ones and uh, they, they keep you, they keep you young, right? He's keeping me real young. My Very hip hurts cool. though from chasing him around. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's get uh, started talking about uh, data networking. Obviously, as things move more and more to the cloud, networking is one of those most critical things, having solid infrastructure in place. And uh, with that being said, uh, go ahead and start your timer. Yes, sir. Starting it right now. All right. Well, firstly, let me say thank you to everyone for being here. Uh, I know everyone's busy and taking a little bit of time out of your day to learn about new technology. While I find it to be valuable, it's just not easy to do. Kudos to you for looking into the future and trying to set your business up for success. Um, I come uh, to Kaseya by way of Datto, joined the team in 2018. Uh, I've had many roles and I've worked with many products, um, but for the entirety of my time at Datto, I've worked with networking. And what's got me really excited today about the future, not only for networking, but for the entire platform that Kaseya brings to life is IT Complete. So today what I'll try to talk about is why it makes sense 
to use no other networking solution outside of data or networking and how that ties into IT Complete, which should help you as an MSP to operate more efficiently, grow your business faster than you could with other solutions, make a ton of money in the process and keep your customers happy for the long term. The first thing that I want to touch on is just a level set, and this should be fair game for everyone in the room, nothing innovative and new here. It's really important, especially as more uh, workloads and applications move out to the cloud. Um, the demand for reliable networking has grown significantly in recent years. Um, in fact, I would argue that no business can operate without reliable network connectivity. Enterprises, of course, small and medium businesses, they have to have it. But I can't even sell coconuts at the beach today without being able to send money from my Clover app out to my bank account. So no matter what the size, every business needs reliable networking. Not only has the demand increased, but the complexity has also shifted. So when I started in IT, networking was kind of table stakes. You install the equipment, it works for a really long time. You could just rely on it and then you replace things as they break or as they go end of life. But today we have 23 billion things connected worldwide and this number is expected to grow to 75 and a half billion in just another year and a half uh, or two years time. So what's gonna happen uh, or what is happening is we have a higher demand for reliable networking than ever before, but it's also more complicated to manage than it ever has been in the past. And what I like about this in managed services is it transforms networking into a table stake product, something that you just kind of have to have, uh, and transforms it into what I consider to be a profitable revenue generator uh, for your business. Now, why is Datto in the networking space? I get asked that question a lot, and uh, we launched the product line in 2017 to solve some problems that I'm going to quickly cover. And if you've seen any of my presentations, presentations over the years I've talked about this. It's the phenomenon of the com uh, commodity and enterprise. And here's kind of the deal. I came from managed services and I sold all different networking solutions. And what I found is that while there are dozens and dozens of vendors that you could choose from when you decide to source a switch or an access point or a firewall or whatever, none of those companies target specifically the managed service provider when they develop the equipment and when they come out with their go-to-market strategy. In fact, when I look at the different types of vendors, I can assign them all into one of two camps, which would be either said commodity, my word, not theirs camp, or the enterprise camp. So what are the differences? The commodity vendor designs equipment for mass appeal. Their target audience, everybody, internal IT, software developers, MSP, and your next door neighbor. They also sell that equipment everywhere. So you'll find some pros and cons if you choose to use a commodity vendor's technology. The pro? It's a low cost, and sometimes it doesn't even require licensing. Some of the cons, when you go out on site and you deliver a quote to your customer and you think this is a slam dunk because the equipment's inexpensive, the customer goes on the Google machine, they figure out exactly what you paid for it because they could buy it on Amazon, and then they ask you, hey, how about I buy it here and you install it? And that was always a really interesting conversation when I start talking about, well, Mr. Customer, we're all in business to make money. And that begs you to think about, well, how do they get to that low cost? And what I find is that they, they often skimp out on some value ads like long-term warranty or phone support, email support, or chat support. Um, and as a result, when a customer downstream has a problem and a device isn't working as expected, um, the MSP has to replace a device. All the while, the customer's down, and that's just frustrating. So it doesn't help you keep your customer satisfied for the long haul. Alternatively, I've worked with the enterprise type solution. Feature set, no problem. They offer more features than I'm ever going to use as a managed service provider. Uh, support, enterprise quality support. They've got next. Call us, email us, chat with us. If I need help, I can get help quickly, assuming that I have a certified engineer on my team. The problem, though, here is the cost. I service small and medium businesses. And if I am reselling these enterprise type solutions, it becomes a challenge because their budgets don't allow for them to buy that type of equipment. In fact, I'm pretty good, I think, at least at selling things. And I used to lose 80% of my opportunities when I had to sell hardware because of the upfront cost of licensing and uh, uh, hardware. So some pros and cons, you could see some of the cons here, which I've already highlighted. 
And the ultimate um, uh, end game is when we got into the networking space, we did so because networking, to my point, just wasn't built for MSPs. And we were very disruptive in the market back in the day, and we continue to be as we march forward and develop our solutions and our marketing strategy in a way that helps MSPs to be more productive, operate more efficiently, and um, and generate more revenue in the process. These are the five things that we've identified that are important for MSPs, flexible pricing options. So we have that. We give you the ability to source equipment for free where there's no upfront cost, or we have a more traditional model where you pay for the equipment and you've got a really reasonably low priced licensing cost, both of which give you the ability to generate recurring revenue around managed networking if you should so choose. We have native cloud management. You never have to buy any additional software or hardware to be able to manage your equipment remotely. It comes that way out of the box so much so that you can configure devices while they're still on a UPS truck, helping again you operate more efficiently. Our hardware is capable. It's also, and this is really the home run today with IT Complete, fully integrated, not just within the data ecosystem, but within the, the IT Complete system. And we'll talk about a brand new integration that we just released, um, uh, I guess it's a week and a half ago now, uh, that's really going to change the game. Uh, when you're managing remote workers. And then support, you gotta solve problems quickly and it can't be a headache for your technicians and we include that too. So that what has historically made up the most MSP centric networking product line in the world. Our lineup is complete. We have a firewall, we have switches, we have access points, and we also have a solution for remote workers uh, that falls within the SASE architecture and will give you the ability to provide secure access to those remote workers at scale um, and add additional security services that they may not be benefiting from today. All of these solutions, as mentioned, designed natively to be managed in the cloud. If I were to give you one highlight, my favorite thing about each device type, on our firewall, the DNA, what I love is we integrate LTE into every box that we ship, so you have built-in redundancy. We manage the relationship with the wireless carrier, so we can position this at a fixed cost. You do not pay per gigabyte when your customers fail over. That gives you predictability. You can resell the solution with redundancy built in. You add your margin on top, your customers know what to expect, and they can build a budget around it. Switches. Uh, you see here that it says they're layer three enabled twice, just because I, I thought that was really cool. But we have four new switches. We launched all four of these switches uh, about a year ago next month. Uh, PoE available on every port. We support PoE plus. Our uplinks are SFP plus on three of the different switches. It's plug and play VoIP uh, using LLDP med. Um, and one of our switches, the, the second one in the stack is actually a multi-gig switch. So you have 2.5 gigabit access ports and 10 gig uplinks. So some really cool new technology on the switch side. For Wi-Fi, we've got three different devices. They are all Wi-Fi 6, and I would argue that based across these three devices, you can really outfit any environment that you might be supporting as an MSP. We have indoor units, we have indoor-outdoor units, we have 2x2 two two radios, we have 4x4 four four radios. They all have a high-powered front-end module, so you'll get about 50% more range than what you're used to from other access points you might be sourcing today. And the newest addition uh, to our stack, uh, with many other exciting things coming in 2024, is our SASE platform. We call it Datto Secure Edge. We launched this this past April, right around the Connect Global, which is coming up again at the end of April. Um, and uh, it uses the SASE architecture. It's really simple to manage. It's designed specifically for MSPs, and it gives you the ability to securely connect remote or hybrid workers to corporate resources with additional security services that they do not get. Get from standard VPN solutions. If you have not looked into SASE, I highly recommend checking it out. I'd love for it to be ours, but if it's not ours, definitely check out a, a, a different variety. Um, today, MSPs in my mind, what they really need, and it's a little self-serving, but the reason I'm here is because I buy into the vision, is they need IT complete. And so, Datto Networking is deeply integrated as a platform with all uh, many other Kaseya products or services. Altogether, they will help you, as mentioned earlier, improve efficiency. You're going to eliminate some vendor fatigue. You don't have to have 17 different vendors. You can deal with one point of contact and source all of the products and services that you need and manage them all with a single sign-on. And also, as mentioned, we, we price it right. So I would argue that um, if you're using anything IT complete, you really shouldn't be looking at any other choices for networking. And conversely, if you're using Datto networking already, 
stack, talk to your account manager and get on board with what we're calling a profit fuel. They'll give you some good insights so that you can make some impactful decisions for your business as you move forward. Speaking of integrations, and I'm 45 seconds over, so I will wrap uh, just shortly. We have many. Networking integrates with Datto RMM, with VSA 10, with Autotask in a number of different ways. And we just released an integration between that Secure Edge platform with our RMM tool so that you can now do conditional access for folks connecting in on their workstations. Datto networking, it's so easy, even a caveman could do it. Final thing, I've got a really cool pro promotion for our um, core networking infrastructure, switches and access points. If you buy any switches or access points from us between now and the end of the first quarter, so March 31st, I can actually give you 25, 20% uh, 20 off of both the hardware and service, and I'll give you the first six months of that service free. Thank you. And sorry, I was a little long. Awesome. And you know, one of the most striking things that uh, you said was, you know, in regards to the switches is not only are they layer three enabled, but they're also layer three enabled. Um, yeah. Dad, dad joke, right? I had, a, I had a play off of that one. So I liked it actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what, what uh, I mentioned earlier is, you know, talking about uh, just the, the whole movement to the cloud. I mean, essentially, you know, you can take away the servers, but you can't take away the networking. And we need to have solid networking infrastructure for our clients uh, to be able to operate. And um, uh, the, the cloud-based uh, management that you talked about, I think, is just, a, you know, an incredible way for us to be able to, um, you know, like, like you mentioned, queue things up, get things done, but also just to be able to take care of things easily in the cloud, much more fast and efficient. So, Ryan, thank you so much. Uh, for those that want to join Ryan in the breakout room in a little bit. Um, keep him in mind there. So we're going to move on to our last but not least, Brian Lawfer with QuoteWorks. And uh, if, if there's anything that we cannot get away with is quoting our clients, right? There's always something that we're here, you know, to, to, to get a quote in front of them to sell. And uh, Brian is going to tell us more about that but I'm not going to let you off the hook, Brian. You got to tell us something interesting about yourself that most people are not aware of. Uh, well, uh, before quote works, I used to be an expert witness in military court martials. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I bet we could sit at the lobby bar and talk for hours about those stories. Well, it's not that exciting. It has to do with uh, test prep in the Air Force, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Okay. Well, we'll we'll still hang out at the lobby bar, you, yeah, even if it's not, not exciting. So, right. <laughs> with that being said, uh, uh, Brian, go ahead and you can do your introduction. I'm going to go ahead and start the clock now, and you got ten minutes. All right. Right. Well, I think it's best to start with you know what is QuoteWorks first, and then I'll get into who I am and uh, what the company is. So, QuoteWorks is the market leading sales quoting and proposal solution. Uh, we are used by over 88,000 users in 101 countries, uh, and we're used in just about every industry, uh, except for maybe insurance, because that's a completely different animal. Uh, but why we're here is that VARs and MSPs make up over a third of our customer base. And as we go through here, you'll find out why uh, that is the case. So who am I and why am I here? Well, my background uh, before QuoteWorks, I was a VAR myself. Uh, and also when uh, before QuoteWorks, I worked for a military test prep company who was a contractor and uh, I was a developer at that time. And I've been in the channel now for 23 years with QuoteWorks. Uh, I'm kind of a dinosaur <laughs> as far as vendors are concerned. Uh, but uh, my roles in the company have, have changed quite a bit over those years. Uh, but I'm still responsible for all of these areas. So technical support, sales and marketing, training and documentation, programming, management of our teams, as well as business development as well. So if you've been at an event that QuoteWorks has been at, I was probably there with you. <laughs> um, but the reason why I uh, really enjoy my role or what I enjoy most about my role is, uh, is actually meeting with customers or a prospect at events. Um, events for me are, are very important as I'm sure they are for many of you. 
And why that's important is because we can actually have a conversation and talk about, you know, what the problem is in their sales process, what needs improvement, you know, what, what doesn't QuoteWorks have or what could QuoteWorks improve on that we already have. And then actually working with them, other members of the community and other partners to come up with a so solution that will solve that problem. And then finally, actually implementing that in QuoteWorks. Sometimes it's me that's developing it. Sometimes it's uh, it's one of my colleagues. And basically through that entire process, I'm still involved. I'm coming up with that solution that uh, will help not just the customer, but uh, the community as a whole. So who are we as QuoteWorks? Well, we were founded in 1993. Uh, if you do your math, uh, that's over 30 years ago. <laughs> so we've been around a while. Uh, and we were founded by John Liu, uh, who was a VAR himself, who needed a way to create quotes for his customers. Sound familiar? Yeah. Uh, so basically, we were you, um, both John and myself. We, we have an intimate knowledge of what our customers need because we were in your shoes ourselves. So the way that QuoteWorks has grown has pretty much been through word of mouth. Uh, as well as through our integrations. And you'll see why those integrations are key for us here in a moment. All of us are based here in Orlando, Florida, and all of our technical support is US-based as well. Uh, so we're easy to get a hold of. You know what you're gonna get when you give us a call. And then the other thing, which I don't wanna offend anybody else on the call, uh, we are self-funded as well. Uh, so, uh, and why that's important is because um, basically, you know, we have no VC funding. Uh, we're not owned by a larger entity. And actually at this point, I believe we're the only quoted solution left in the MSP space that can say this. And what this enables us to do is to have open integrations with any platform or solution that makes sense for us or our community of QuoteWorks users. We're able to listen to the community uh, as far as what they want and need, and not what our backer, the backers of some VC company want to make their money back or to resell what they had already invested in. Now, a lot of big companies uh, do have their own quoting tools, whether it be a, their PSA or CRM, um, but we use those same APIs that they do. So, um, you know, we're gonna get into a little bit here, like ConnectWise, for instance. Uh, ConnectWise has their own quoting tool, but QuoteWorks is still the highest rating quoting solution on their marketplace. And this was from yesterday. So I know that this is up to date. Um, so, you know, what, uh, what did customers use before QuoteWorks? Well, a lot of them used Word or Excel, um, or they were using their accounting solution or ERP solution, or unfortunately one of our competitors. Um, what we found out was over half of them didn't use any solution at all. So a lot of them were just using Word or Excel to create their quotes. So why did they make the switch to QuoteWorks? Well, to reduce errors. I mean, that I think that's the biggest reason everybody switches to a quoting tool. Um, and the easiest way to do that is we've got a very um, intuitive way to handle peer reviews as well as an approval process, as well as ways to make sure that, you know, quotes that shouldn't go out don't. Um, we also have electronic signing and acceptance that's built into the platform. You don't have to use some external tool like a DocuSign or anything like that. Quote Valet has that right built into the solution. We also have credit card and ACH payments that we're able to handle. And QuoteWorks supports over 80 different payment gateways. We're not just talking about a handful of, of them, you know, so, you know, a lot of people, they have to switch to using like Authorize.net or some other platform. We don't make you do that. Uh, we integrate with everybody, uh, which goes back to some of our course. And uh, that makes sure that you get the, the rates that you need uh, through that payment gateway. And we're able to collect the down payment for you, progress payments, or the full amount. The other reason why is people wanna know when their quotes are viewed. Have you ever sent a quote to a customer uh, and it got caught in spam or you know they're just, you don't know if they've actually looked at it or not? Well, with QuoteWorks, you know the first time they look at the quote, each additional time they look at the quote, if they're making changes on the quote because you're able to allow them on certain items maybe to change the quantity of an item or have required items or optional items that they can select from, um, you get notified anytime anything changes on that quote. So you know when to pick up the phone and give them a call. 
Um, and you're also able to create beautiful branded quotes and proposals. Well, what does that actually mean? Uh, well, that allows you to have spec sheets, uh, your statements of work, agreements, and more all integrated into that single document that you present to the, uh, the customer. So you're able to give them a single quote or a, a 50 page proposal just by changing a couple of options using from that same document. And then to standardize pricing and workflows, which is super important. When I talk to prospective customers, I always talk about the four pillars with QuoteWorks. First one being price. It, we're very flexible when it comes to our pricing. Um, we have um, one of the key things has to do with like users. We're based on concurrent users, not named users. So if you've got five people at your company that needs to do a quote, but only one at a time, you only need one license of QuoteWorks. Speaking of licensing, uh, you can we have licenses as well as we have subscriptions, depending on what makes sense for you and your company. You can purchase it up front or you can pay monthly or annually as well, which allows us to offer a couple of scenarios when it comes to implement, implementing QuoteWorks. You can have an on-premise solution, a hybrid solution, or a completely cloud SaaS-based option as well. And the key is there's no commitments. You know, you're not going to be signing a three-year commitment to us like uh, Al was talking about earlier. Uh, so you're able to basically pay month to month or annually, depending on what your needs are. We also have legendary phone support. You're able to pick up the phone, give us a call. You don't have to send in an email or create a ticket before talking to a rep. And then one of the key things for me is definitely when it comes to features. We've been around for 30 years. We've got lots of core functionality built into the product, as well as experience when it comes to talking to the community and adding in those new features. And all of our features are fully vetted. We're not just checking a box to say, yes, we added this feature. No, we're making sure that we're, we're going back to what I was talking about before. We're solving the problem. We're making sure that we're handling all the features that you need when we add that, uh, that, that, that feature. Uh, and then the fourth is integrations. We have over 115 integrations in QuoteWorks. And that's not even including all 80 uh, payment gateways either. So with QuoteWorks, we're more than just quotes. Um, I don't want to go through the entire process, but we're in every single part of the sales process from creating the quote, uh, sourcing the product, whether that be from distribution, from your own native product database, or even from your like PSA that might have like all of your um, your services and whatnot in there. We can also send out an RFQ automatically out to your vendors as well and collect them and centralize that location for all, all of that vendor communication. We're gonna make sure all of your, uh, your opportunities in your CRM or PSA are always up to date. We're gonna deliver that quote. We've got a revision process, so you've got all that history. We're gonna collect that payment. We're gonna win that opportunity and then Here's the thing that a lot of people don't think about in the initial uh, process in quoting. You may have sourced, like say a, a firewall from Ingram Micro, maybe 30 days ago, five days ago for that quote, but a lot of things happen in, with distribution in five days. So you're able to on the fly before placing the order, see what availability is at each of the distributors and make the change on the fly and then place your online order create the PO in your PSA or accounting, track the order all the way through delivery and fulfillment. So with that, I just wanna say also, we, we've got a very aggressive product development team uh, when it comes to adding new features in QuoteWorks. Uh, even though we've been around for 30 years, we are adding functionality all the time. We, we add between 150 and 300 new features each year. We're very transparent with all of our releases. You can go to quoteworks.com forward slash updates and see them all. And uh, there's just some of our, our recent features and I know I'm over, so I apologize. <laughs> there you go, Dan. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, struck me in the beginning is when you said that you're based out of Orlando, Florida, um, you guys are 80 degrees today. It's 39 where I'm at. So uh, <laughs> it, th that was very, very, very striking for me. But what what I really did hear um, is when you talk about the electronic signature and the payment capture, um, I, I think that is just such a critical thing for us as MSPs because time is money. We want to make it easy. We want uh, you know our clients to be able to uh, give the green light as quick as possible and uh, not delay anything. So uh, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and um, do a couple things. We're going to throw a poll out there. Um, we've got a poll that will 
just, you know, you can go ahead and complete. Let us know who would you like to hear from. We'll pass this information on to our vendors. Um, while we're doing that poll, um, what we're going to do next is our demo rooms. Um, each of our speakers will automatically get moved into their respective demo room. And then for uh, everybody else, you can go ahead and go down to the breakout um, menu at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and you'll be able to choose from the one of the three demo rooms. And um, we uh, just due to time, we might go over about five minutes here. Um, hopefully that's okay with everyone. And uh, I just want to make sure that you get some additional time for the demo room. Um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and open up our demo rooms right now. Uh, Taylor's going to go ahead and open those up and you can move into them. If by any chance you are not sure how to get into the demo room, just shoot us a message in the chat and we can move you. Additionally, in the event that you don't pick one, we're just going to go ahead and move people into rooms uh, randomly. For everybody out there in uh, streaming land that's watching us via streaming, we're going to go dark while we are in our demo rooms. Uh, one more reason why it's a, a great benefit to join us live in the Zoom call so you can participate with the demo rooms. All right, the um, rooms are going to be exiting back to the main stage here. Um, for some reason, the countdown um, didn't move everybody back, um, but we'll have everybody back here in just uh, about a minute. See a couple more that have rolled back in, including Miss Talon and Mr. Miles. Just about 20 more seconds. Everybody will be back here in our, our main room. Do apologize for the delay. Three, two, one. Happy New Year. All right, we see everybody uh, rolling back in here to the main stage. Do apologize, uh, took a little bit longer for everybody to get moved back. Uh, Zoom um, normally moves everybody back within the, the 120 seconds, but decided to take a little longer. Um, so I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the demo rooms. Um, and uh, if you have any additional questions uh, for any of our vendors um, and you did fill out the poll, you can um, expect to hear from them. Additionally, in the event that uh, you know you didn't complete the poll and you want to hear from someone, go directly to everythingmsp.com. You can search for the desired vendor and you're able to communicate directly to them right there. Um, as well as, of course, you can search them and go directly to their own website. Um, all right, so last but not least, we have $250 cash. That's just burning a hole in our pocket that we want to give away. And um, so our winner, we have drawn this, and I am so bad at last names. It's not L. Al. <laughs> Al, you're, you're not eligible, L. I'm sorry. Um, well, Brian will buy you a drink at the lobby bar uh, at the next event. So um, Peter Barsic, or I, I, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Peter. Um you know, of all people with the name of having Tomaszewski, I should be able to pronounce every last name that's out there, but it doesn't work that way. So, uh, Peter, we will reach out to you. We'll send you a message to be able to get some uh, details from you so we can uh, send you the $250 cash. And uh, with that being said, I want to thank everybody for your time today. We hope that uh, you were able to learn some new things uh, about these vendors, some new things that you can add your stack to help your business drive forward. So. 
With that being said, everybody have a great rest of your day and we will talk to you guys all soon. Take care, everybody.